Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Lionel. Uh, Farouk will be joining in another session, so I'll be leading the presentation today. I'd like everyone to have a look around. Well, think about it from an IT leader standpoint. Thousands of people are out there, highly dependent on a few of us to make it happen. That's the challenge that we have. Here's my first slide. In 2015, Fort Gartner had highlighted that there were 4.9 billion connected devices around the world, up by 30% versus 2014, and by 2020, 25 billion. And you think about it in a school environment, the number of smartphones a kid brings, the tablets which are connected alongside the computers, this is, the reality is, is not too far away. But here's the interesting slide. This is a corporate slide that we have. The size of the security spend and the years involved. This shows the amount of cyber attacks that have happened over the last few years, and you can see it growing exponentially, and the size of the bubble highlights the level of risk and the impact that it had onto the organization. Here's the scary part. 71% of it started out with endpoint devices. It didn't start in a server or the network, it started with endpoint devices. These are studies that have, have been proven right. If you're in IT security, if you're a cybersecurity professional, you are quite familiar with the threats that we have. And so 40% more in 2016, more than 2015. But we live in an age of 2017, and all of you are very familiar with the recent cyber attacks that have happened. In 20, in this year alone, if you have not seen, go to the Cybersecurity Agency website of Singapore and download the 2016 Cybersecurity Report. You will see all the numbers exponentially increasing. And we expect 2017 to no, be no different, neither 2018. So we are in an age of unprecedented hacking or cybersecurity threats. Give you a little fun fact. Any of you from government, government sector, don't be shy and raise your hand. It's a proud thing to have. In 2017, they worked, here's, here's what the Singapore government did in 2016 and then into 2017. The big news in Singapore was that they did a massive, all government agencies, massive internet separation of devices. That means if you want to do work, you do work on one PC. You want to do internet surfing? Imagine the difficulty for marketing, procurement, anyone that's outward facing. You do it on, a, on another. And to a large extent, the Singapore government took a very big risk. It was implemented sometime in April, May of 2017 for all the Singaporeans who are familiar with it. Guess what happened in May of 2017? Worldwide, the WannaCry virus Hit. It hurt, hit institutions, governments, corporations, individuals, 300 over 1,000, 300 over 1,000 PCs were compromised. Fortunately, the Singapore government stayed relatively safe. Some call it draconian measures, but this is how serious the threat is. Why? Because we are, while we are not a cybersecurity agency, we understand the threat that it poses itself. Here's the situation in Singapore. If there's a cybersecurity attack into your network, into your institution, it costs pretty much $9.5 million. And the number of it is increasing. I had a fun exercise because I was in Edutech in 2016. I talked to corporations on a regular basis. And I, fun, I had a fun exercise. I asked my admin staff, I said, every time there is a cybersecurity attack that is reported in the Straits Times, our mainstream newspaper, Track it. Just put it out in a bar chart. I want to see 2015, 2016, 2017. And after a while, it became quite redundant exercise because we could not keep track. Because the situation ended up something like this. These are all Singapore news. Just in 2017 alone. Different companies, different organizations being attacked. It didn't get any easier. So this, 
we fully understand the challenges that IT leaders, all of you, face. With the new cybersecurity bill that's coming up, things are just going to get tougher because you're required to be fully accountable if you're the CIO or the CISO. You're fully required to announce it to the government. And sometimes it goes into the press if there's a cyber attack into your institution. And yet at the same time, we are a PC and printer company. People ask us on a regular basis, do printers get hacked? These are real examples of how printers got hacked worldwide. There were a couple of hundred American colleges hacked through printers to spew out, to spew out hundreds of thousands of hate mail. There's nothing about that. It's the hackers just wanted to prove your point. You are unsecured. It spewed out hate mail across hundreds of thousands of printers. We've got a case over here which I'll talk to you about in Singapore that we've actually used in one of our video clips. So the reality is this, printers do get hacked, and I'll explain to you why in a short while. And here in Singapore, if any institution thinks they're safe, you're not. Two of our highest, lead, uh, two of our biggest IHLs were recently hacked into. Some of our schools were hacked into. Fortunately, nothing was really stolen, but yes, similar to what the cybersecurity bill is required next year, you're report, required to report it. This is just a snapshot of the cybersecurity bill. You won't be able to see it, but basically this, it says this. In 20, 20, 2015, there were five cases of ransomware. 2016, 19. 2017, we can't count. Why? Because of the Petya virus, because of the WannaCry virus that attacked us all. All of that was ransomware. In addition to that, 43% of all cyber attacks happened from the very simple phishing email. It started out very simple, and then after that, it spread across. Here's, here are some facts for you. There's a worldwide study that called out, are, do IT leaders consider printers as a vulnerability for cyber attacks? 64% said yes. 60% said they actually had a breach through the printers. But yet, at the same time, very few of you, or them, are taking the necessary precautions. The reason is this, and we understand, we've spoken to thousands of organizations, and this is my job to spread the word also. The reason is very simple. The attack is so frontal. It's attacking you through your PCs. It's attacking through your smartphones. You're trying to get into your ner servers and networks. Your back door, you've got no time to figure it out yet. And by the way, you do fundamentally, many companies or institutions do not know how to. So what are we doing in HP? Well, we're bringing the message to all of you. We're bringing the message up front. So I'm going to show you a short clip. I've only got two videos, but it should be fun. It's Hollywood movie style. It stars Christian Slater. And nowadays, I get mixed up between Christian Slater and Kevin Spacey because he's so much in the news nowadays for all the wrong reasons. But it stars Christian Slater. He stars in a Netflix show called Mr. Robot as a hacker, right? Now, this first clip, where he hacks into a printer in a financial institution, is actually, well, the truth is stranger than fiction. The video, the video I'm going to show is fiction, but the truth is, it was based on an actual study done by an institution here in Singapore, where they flew up a drone with two mobile phones into the Singapore CBD area, and they were successfully able to intercept print jobs. They did it with permission and all of that because it was a case study about how vulnerable the CBD area was against cyber attacks as simple as a drone. So they flew it up, they intercepted print jobs. This first clip that I'm going to show from, from uh, Siren Christian Slater is called The Wolf. He is the wolf. He's a cyber attacker. So let's have a look. built-in malware protection. Now, 
they're all busy watching a little something I threw up on the control panel. Just look at your screen. I can intercept all their print jobs until I find the info I'm looking for. Ooh, yeah. today's somebody's birthday. Perfect. The really good stuff is upstairs. The kind of stuff that could destroy any future this grand financial institution could hope to have. A lot of over-dramatization, but don't you love Hollywood? Um, and I, like I, I mentioned earlier, securing the device, securing the data, and securing the document. Let's have a, a simple exercise. All of you got your smartphones? Yes? Oh, let's open up the smartphones. Let's do some internet search. Go to your favorite Google or, or Bing or whichever one. Pull it up and type in there, PC antivirus. Type in there, PC antivirus, and look at what images come up. The problem is that it's no, not that there is no solution. The problem is that you've got too many solutions. As IT leaders within the industry, see the images. You've got Norton, you've got Microsoft. You've got 101 solutions. Which one do you choose? Do you guys see it? Yes, just a simple nod will do. Right? You see all sorts of different types of solutions. Remove the word PC, type in there, printer. Antivirus. Let's see what we can buy off the web. Any particular brand you like to purchase, consider, consult? The reason why there's none is because the language of the printer, whether it is P uh, HP, Canon, Xerox, it is in a language that does, does, is not proprietary. It is proprietary only to the manufacturer. So there's nothing really much you can buy off the shelf. You can't buy anti-malware protection. And how do we know? HP is the only company in the world that is both a PC manufacturer and a print manufacturer. We are the world's largest. We know what goes into that copier. Think about it just for a second. For it to do so much, it is network connected, yes. Does it have RAM? Yes. Does it have a hard drive? Yes. Does it have a processor? Yes. Some of it even has your touch screen, yes. Some of the printers that you have in your offices are as powerful as a PC. It's just that they are unsecured and unprotected, connected to your network. So that's the challenge that you face. So if you have a chance, have a talk about we are the only company right now that's really promoting security, protecting it at the BIOS level, point number one. Any sort of attack at the BIOS level. Number two, it protects your memory. Number three, it protects your firmware. And the part that IT leaders love a lot is that with the security manager, you are now able to control your entire fleet, regardless of location. To be able, just like your PCs that you have, that you've invested so much in, you're now able to deploy security policies, upgrading the, the firmware, the software, across your entire fleet. Those are the kind of solutions that we are trying to bring. You notice the conversation is no longer cost per page, pages per minute. If you want it cheap, you want it fast, sometimes you, it, that's no longer the conversation that we're having. We're talking about, yes, it must be affordable. Yes, it must be productive. And yet, at the same time, it must be secure. Now, here's another video that talks about phishing, how easy it is to attack from a simple PC. <laughs> I love a good office party. Everyone looks so happy. Happy birthday. Especially Janice. Oh, thought everybody would forget her birthday. Okay. Not me. Look, Janice, you just got an email. What's that? A gift certificate from your favorite spa to honor the big day? How thoughtful. Now all you gotta do is print it. Oh, come on, Janice. It's legit. You just gotta print it out. Come on. We all know you love a good foot rub. That's it. Now I have access to every computer on the network. How, you ask? Well, none of the printers here automatically monitor for threats, so that gift certificate I just sent Janice to print was actually hiding my malware in the print stream. 
bypassing the company security, which means now I can use the printer to get around the firewall and surprise, access all the unencrypted data and route it to myself. Hmm. I know it's a mouthful, but it's actually really simple. Because these guys don't automate their security monitoring, not only can I see every document that gets printed in this place, I can see all the good stuff hiding on their computers too. Now it's a party. I'm speaking to a number of CIOs and a number of companies, corporations nowadays. They love to send out security messages. I'm sure you do. Make sure your password is updated. Don't click on any form of suspicious email and all of that. And to make sure employees get the message, corporations right now send out fake emails to employees saying, click on this link. And their frustration is quite, quite consistent. We did a survey, 20 to 25% of all your employees still click on the damn link. Compromising your entire network. So they run these security drills which largely point to the same thing. Your weakest, device, your weakest point is your end point, the user themselves. So we've thought really hard in terms of how do we then secure the device. How do we prevent a school that requires the internet to stop surfing, to go to a website that is unsecured? How would a child know and that child is connected to your network? Your, your challenges are far greater than the, those that of a corporation. So we then figure out how do we then, from a HP perspective, because we're not software manufacturers, we're not a cybersecurity agency, we then started talking about how then do we secure the device, the data, and the identity of the people. All of you are familiar with multi-factor authentication, yes? Pretty much? Government has that a lot. In fact, they're one of the most secure in here, here in Singapore. What's the challenge with multi-factor authentication? It's hard to implement. People keep on declining, <laughs> declining it. We figured out a way with a particular kit that you're now able to enforce multi-factor authentication across every single person that wants to use that PC, therefore making it a million times safer. Here in Singapore, our CEO of Singtel has said that if you have a seven alphanumeric password, he will take him 11 minutes to crack it. They run cybersecurity simulations all the time. Your alphanumeric password, seven, uh, 11 minutes. If you made it 11 alphanumeric, which is a lot to type, it'll take him a week. But if you, you have multi-factor authentication being implemented across the organization, it is a million times safer. That's point one. Point number two, how do you have an internet surfing experience? You know, all of us open up multiple tabs, right? When you surf. What happens if that particular one tab has been infected? The solution is, this, are you able to protect it from moving horizontally and into the device? There's technology behind that already. Because people surf, people surf a lot. What happens if you lose that device? How do you remotely switch it off? Those are solutions that we want because students will lose their devices on a regular basis, unfortunately. Losing their data, <laughs> They've lost the device, they're going to lose their data, and then eventually the identity. So, we came up with a list of secure PCs. I won't go into too much about it, but we are the only manufacturer, only PC manufacturer that has decided to invest at BIOS level security. A BIOS level that is able to heal itself if there's a malware that it detects, and it will report it to IT. The only user experience that is different is that when the user sees it, it will highlight to the user that, your, that the PC is infected. It will self-heal itself. Work continues. Who's informed? IT is informed. That's the ability when we bring from a hardware perspective. And finally, when we talk about it, here's the security stack. Below the OS, in the OS, and above the OS, we have come up with an entire stack of solutions for schools to consider. As you roll out all your endpoint devices, how do you protect your device below the OS, at the OS, and above the OS? Things like visual hacking, how do you prevent that? We found a way. 
that's integrated into the screen, for example. But in summary, the point I'm trying to make is this. We fully recognize the threat level of cybersecurity in the, in the country, across corporations, and also in education institutions. Point number one. Point number two, the threat of PCs and printers as endpoint devices. We are working very hard with institutions, CSA, and hopefully with you on securing those devices. And point number three, those solutions are real from a hardware perspective. That's where, what, what is the value proposition that HP wants to have. So I have to think about it. Outside there, we would be having some of the solutions, and hopefully you will find it as a productive one from securing PCs and printers as an endpoint. Thank you very much.